for the first time i realized that the foreign secretary was actually a think tank head mm-hmm. so you know he, 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 that is his that is his hidden personality you don't but डॉक्टर जयशंकर या 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 ही इज अ थिंक टैंकर ही इज अ थिंक टैंकर इन डिस्गाइज रैसिना टॉक शॉप नहीं है अच्छा हां okay. पहले वो हां पहले मैं ये पहले मैं ये इसको हाँ. रिजेक्ट करता हूं इस नोशन को <laughs> रैसिना इज अ प्लेस वेयर वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग डाइवर्सिटी डिफरेंस एंड डिसएग्रीमेंट्स सो दैट्स व्हाट आई वांट टू कम वी आर अ लोकेशन ओनली ग्लोबल एरिना इन द वर्ल्ड वेयर वी प्लेस प्रीमियम ऑन डिसएग्रीमेंट्स बिकॉज़ अनलेस यू कैन वॉइस देम यू कैन नॉट फाइंड वेज टू गो पास देम in this world today we are all trying to censor disagreements we are trying to cancel disagreements we are trying to mute disagreements raisina is disagreement central they may or may not like it but they see the government returning so yeah. there are so there are there are two kinds of responses hmm. uh, but uh, generally the large spectrum of responses say they are coming back some of them may not like you know we were never part of the cozy club of the americans we always had to take the good and the bad when when it came to america we still do that it is difficult to walk five blocks from new york at 11 pm at night without getting beaten up because of your color right i I've, i've been attacked twice in the last five years uh, if trump comes be prepared for tariffs be prepared for a punishment to everyone so there's going to be collective punishment everyone who <laughs> every and anyone who had a phone call with biden will be punished people who understand the world appreciate india people who still view the world through the political lens uh, view india through that political lens namaste jai hind welcome to another edition of the ani podcast with smita prakash thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing it with people who you think will benefit from listening into these conversations my guest today is dr samir saran president of the observer research foundation samir is a dynamo in every sense of the word because he brings a sense of energy to the complex world of international relations i wouldn't be wrong to say that he's the unofficial indian ambassador to the world why because he tells the india story and demystifies it in a way that international audiences can understand us better and every year samir hosts the raisina dialogue in new delhi a premier conference on geopolitics and economics it has different themes every year this year the theme is chaturanga conflict contest cooperate and create it's from february 21st to 23rd in new delhi and we'll see global leaders in politics business media and civil society come together to discuss global issues the sessions will not be open to all but will be put up on youtube and the orf website i will be hosting podcast on the sidelines of the raisina dialogue which will come up in the weeks ahead joining me in this conversation is my colleague ishan prakash samir thank you for sparing the time and coming on the podcast you're just back from the munich security conference you're hosting over 100 global leaders and uh, um, on wednesday thursday friday but it must be great to come on the podcast right it's great to be back here smita because you have really done up your room really well <laughs> and clearly it shows the success of the podcast so well done more thank power you. to you thank you so i think i have ishan to thank for the neon lighting and stuff that we have out here we want to show because you know uh, it like you, it, at your raisina dialogue where uh, all these things matter a lot not just it the matters, conversation yeah, it matters and i'm really glad that you are there is some podcaster who is actually making us feel comfortable in the room otherwise <laughs> going to podcast studios is like going for a punishment posting or something why do you say that बेंच पे बिठा देते हैं छोटे कमरे में बंद कर देते हैं पानी पूछते नहीं है यहाँ पे देखो ड्राई फ्रूट्स एंड कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स एंड कॉफी एंड कर्नाटक कैफे स्मिता प्रकाश इज हॉस्पिटैलिटी इन फुल फ्लो सो टेक द नेम्स ऑफ पॉडकास्ट ना जो इतना अनकंफर्टेबल करते हैं नहीं मैं किसी को प्रमोट नहीं करता Okay tell us what happened at the Munich Security Conference there were very interesting conversations that you had especially with regard to China and uh, and India the India story like i began by introducing you when i say that um you know you are india's unofficial ambassador because the way you tell the india story and the way you defend the india story it's quite amazing samir uh, i don't say this to you often uh, off camera but i'm saying it and admitting it today that i have you know you're very erudite without being sharp you're able to uh, you're able to uh, say this is what india stands for so tell me was the pushback uh, a tremendous or was it lesser as compared to the earlier uh, munich security uh, uh, conferences that you've attended <coughs> you know to me munich this time was about uh, under stated but undeniable european and western realization that things are not going well 
I think this was the first conference last year. It was all about let's go and win the war, let's go and defeat the Russians, let's go and you know reclaim Europe and let's uh, defend our way of life and and the liberal order as we built it. Last year it was all about a degree of machismo. It was about you know being a little alpha in the defense of what you stand for. This time I think there was an understated, undeniable pessimism mm -hmm. that things are not going well. Europe was not really concerned about anyone else. Europe was staring at two big realities: uh, a Russian resurgence over the last nine to ten months. Their defense industry is kicking in. They have rejected their battle plans. Their um, strategic strategic adaptation, as someone rightly described it, has is is beginning to uh, define the 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 course of war. Uh, the tactical gains that the uh, Ukrainians and their uh, and their supporters could make in the initial uh, year or so of the battle is that period is over. So you are seeing a Europe that is now staring at the first reality of a Russian resurgence. Mm. And what does that mean to countries neighboring that uh, neighboring this big colossal power that is beginning to flex its muscles in in its full dimension? So Russia is back, and Europe knows it. That's first reality. The second reality, which is not certain, but certainly equally dangerous for the Europeans is Trump is back. So in some sense between the, 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 the possibility of Trump returning mm. and uh, Russia now beginning to, to exert its uh, muscles is terrifying. And Europe was a, uh, the Munich Security Conference was a mass uh, in some sense uh, sphere for uh, folks who are uh, scratching their heads and finding means and ways of responding to uh, the dark spaces they stare at. So Europe was generally a, a very pessimistic, uh, it was in a pessimistic mood if you were to look at the MSC as a, as a gauge of, of Europe. Um, China was um, hardly mentioned. I think uh, 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 the good news was it wasn't celebrated because sometimes Europeans do that quite well. You know, they mm. have this, uh, they have a China obsession and a, and a China uh, need, uh, they need the China fix in their economy. So sometimes you see that this time, uh, they were also the murmurs of uh, what they now clearly know is a tacit Chinese support to the Russian resurgence uh, from the uh, supplies that Russia needs to uh, certain hardware and, and components that Russia requires for its uh, uh, military activities. They know China has been doing that. So there is a sense that that China is not on their side, but they are again in that si peculiar situation that they pretend to ignore it because um, their own economic engines still continue to rely on uh, the China story. Uh, India uh, was the sweet space, was a good space, was, was that space where it's non-controversial, it's positive, put your money, get good returns, uh, fastest growing and largest uh, eco uh, the, you know, the emerging economy in the world. So India was always the place everyone went to uh, in many ways um, uh, find reasons to smile, find reasons to be positive, find reasons to work together. So India was a good story. At Interesting, Munich. right? I mean, Very good story. You've seen it in, in the past 10 years, you've been attending these conferences from being a no-show or a no-story, hmm. you've come to a position where you're not just a story, you're on the menu. They're the good story. And uh, yeah. India is a good story and for good reasons. Hmm. Uh, uh, and I'm not saying that everything is good with us or everything is fine and everything is perfect. No, that's not the point I'm making. I think in relative terms, this is the place you want to be. Hmm. You know, I said this in, uh, in, in Davos. I was in Davos in January and I said this in, in, in Davos. In 2008-9, there was another economy that was same GDP, same per capita income, and in the next 14 years, it became the most important partner to 100 countries. I said this in Davos, that country was China. Today, we are at the same space. And why are we at the same space? Because in 2008-9, because of the, uh, the travails of the financial crisis, the world had, economy had been ravaged, countries were struggling, people wanted new spaces, new geographies, new markets, new economies to, to become the engine of a new uh, growth for the future. Uh, well, this is the exact situation today. Mm -hmm. We are recovering from the pandemic. The world needs additionality. The world needs new spaces that they can invest in. They need uh, uh, dynamic uh, markets that are uh, going to shape the future. India is there. Same GDP, same per, same per capita income as 15 years ago China, as China was. And, and of course, the additionality that we offer today. So we are that space mm -hmm. that uh, 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 people are going to want to... Now, look, we should also not 
um, take this as a given. Hmm. We have to do a lot to translate hmm. this opportunity and moment into a decadal uh, reality. Into hmm. say ten years from now, we are going to be say twelve or thirteen trillion dollars. Uh, we are we are hitting the right notes in terms of our economic policies. We are giving the right signals to investors and businesses. We are uh, working as a nation. to attract investments so i think the whole of nation approach is vital that you know uh, we will have to make sure that at least seven to eight champion states drive the india story it can't be one or two states who are doing it so i think that's the moment we are in and mm. that's the story i tell i mean good bad ugly this is the reality yeah. that we will have to sign a free trade agreement with ourselves so india needs an fta with itself mm. that we are one country <laughs> yeah. uh, we need to uh, then invest and connect it through infrastructure yeah. and 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 then we need to use the demographic advantages of different locations uh, to to power the transformations in in other regions mm. so we will have to think of ourselves as a continental economy where we have to bring the 30 30 odd moving parts together in in one uh, uh, you know symphony that uh, is really really appealing to the world i think we are we are there in terms of our our intention and determination and i think uh, in the next 5 years we have to put the undergirding in space before we head mm-hmm. into the raisina and all like i could tell that you want to uh, talk about the trump returning no, wala no not just that he was since he was there hmm. uh, so when you were there in the uh, last month or so numbers are coming in there are a bunch of western nations now that are seeing contraction yes. in their economy yes. so did you notice those anxieties as well while you were at the conference and at the same time there is a positive story emerging in india as a possible group, you know tr- trade partner with these See, countries see the economic anxieties in europe are being expressed in their elections hmm. you must realize that the gains that many parties are making uh, and you can dismiss them as nationalists right conservatives, yeah. conservatives look it's an economic backlash hmm. end of the day mm. uh, if your electricity bills are twice as expensive or three times as costly in terms of your grocery and energy and uh, and fuel bills people are going to respond to it so europe is already seeing a backlash over the last one year or so uh, in their hustings in their elections uh, to the economic situation so i think the recession may not be necessarily talked about in stark terms uh, they are moderate generally in everything they talk about mm. so even there e- mm. e- even what is going wrong is not necessarily uh, 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 mm. you know mm. uh, amplified amplified like mm. uh, uh, say in this country if in india you were having mm. india mein to agar kuch galat nahi bhi ho raha hota hai hum ek pehle galat ek banayenge galat aur fir usko amplify karenge <laughs> so you know uh, 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 we yeah. like that right hame thoda but also a small incident out here affects a uh, 20 million people or 40 million people you know so whereas in europe you know one riot here one immigrant issue there it doesn't really impact on so many people i think that's also a reason like so you know in europe you have Scale the sovereign and size bo- matters. the sovereign boundaries actually uh, contain problems within small cluster of people huh. right hamara kya hai ki hamari to boundary bahut badi hai so hamara to kahin bhi kuch ho lagta hai ki ye national issue hai yeah i have to explain to people that if you look at the number of incidents let's let's you since you mentioned um, uh, say protests or yeah. or rioting or uh, a- any form of disruptions if you take the number of incidents yeah. on a per capita basis mm-hmm. on the scale of india you will find that we are uh, far less affected from these mm-hmm. mobilizations that are yeah. uh, you know today proliferating the world mm. uh, including um, uh, uh, you know where ishan used to be in canada <laughs> you know so so wahan pe my wife is from canada main nahi tha kabhi wahan theek hai yaar hum sab galti karte hain but 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 uh, but dekhiye main ye baat kar raha hu ki uh, india mein relative uh, hum logo kya hai ki we like to be in a state of agitation I so we we, we we conjure it up like you know when the rohingya if there is a hmm. rohingya related incident you know it gets so blown up in the world when and it it i have to explain to people that this is one incident regarding the Correct. rohingyas in one part of india it doesn't affect 1.2 billion people or 1.3 billion people it's one incident yes. it gets yes. sorted out but people don't get that with yeah. with regard to india so so i think what is really changed is uh, uh, two things for india number one i think there is now uh, uh, the at least a strategic community the community that decides economic and political futures has reached the conclusion uh, in most capitals in that part of the world that india is the place to be in hmm. 
and you can see that uh, through uh, the various bilateral political visits you can see it uh, in terms g20. of the g20 consensus there are number of uh, uh, signposts that tell you that the strategic community has reached the conclusion that india needs to be part of any future calculus if they are to succeed we also sort we sort in uh, e- the eams interaction also the confidence with which he when he was interacting with blinken there and he basically said defended india's decision to take o- russian oil no in fact jo wahan baithe hain in fact he uh, what i think again see now this 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 is a very uh, important observation you made i think for the first time uh, you are not seeing a defensive indian uh, presence on a yes. global stage you are actually uh, not uh, defensive uh, not diffident not diffident not defensive uh, yeah. uh, uh, you are uh, uh, you know in many ways encouraging others mm. to embrace what you are doing to have you know so so in mm. some ways uh, uh, his intervention was that uh, learn from me you know learn with me if if there is something that if allowed, i have a choice if i have a choice I appreciate the correct. fact that so, i have a choice so i think i think it was a very different india but you know that's that's the story but when you were there when they walked off the stage did you notice blinken and all rolling their eyes like did you have to say that in the camera on in front of the cameras hamari utar di nahi i i don't think wo tha i don't uh. think that was the that was the uh, i think they quite appreciated it okay. and by the way in private and uh, you know i have said this before i think in private i am quite sure uh, that the americans and the europeans uh, thank the indian foreign minister or their indian counterparts and and appreciate the fact that their cars are on the road because india picks up yes, the, the russian crew the russian, russian crew turns it around and, and exactly. turns it around yes. and gives it to them yeah. so in fact in in poland some um, cheeky uh, young scholar stood up from in the audience and asked me uh, some moral question of india buying energy from russia that how can you it's some you know it, it yeah, was yeah. A, it was heavy on morality question. low on mm. substance mm. so mm. Uh, uh, i like those questions by the way so so pucha uh, unne because he can steamroll no 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 woh nahi nahi it shows ki passion hai you know when you're young and if you Haan. if, if you are not idealistic if you're not like that true, true, then true. there's something wrong with the genes now okay. right so dikhta hai hamara hamari hamara jawani dikhti hai unki unki baaton mein so he asked me this question ki how can you do this how can you be buying oil from Russia and they are that money is being used to uh, you know destroy people's yes. and lives and um, uh, homes and everything else and i told him look have you driven to the conference in a car he says yes i said say thank india and now sit down mm. so thank mm. india that you can drive to your conference in a car that fuel that you have in the car comes from india and the heating. thank your leader <laughs> thank your leader for buying it from india and thank india for buying it from wherever it does mm. now sit down and and uh, ask that question इम्पोर्ट weapons what is the morality about that we don't export we only export uniforms kyunki jab hum goli chalayenge to hum america ko blame karenge kyunki bandook ki thi goli wahan ki thi ha aur aur russia for that russia yeah russia ko karenge nahi dekhiye so you're right the point here is that there is a there we all want the world to be a better place so mm. of, of course we don't want a world which is uh, afflicted by war and conflict and people are dying right all of us don't want that in fact uh, you know c- coming to the reason i'm here that is the purpose of dialogue oh. since you were a man on the ground map in munich mai ek aur cheez puchna tha maine when you were there the news of uh, namalni's passing away came mm-hmm. his uh, partner was also there at that time she rolled out she gave a statement just what was the mood over there when when the when people in the conference got to know that this has happened and she Dekhi, was also I, I there i think uh, uh, we should um, uh, first of all i think it's terrible what happened and um, i the fact is we don't know what happened yes so uh, whether it was a natural uh, passing away or was it uh, something that was uh, uh, through the various conditions uh, inflicted on him uh, anyways uh, so let's let's first humanize his death it's yes. a human which passed away having said that i think this was uh, for some of them there including uh, because even uh, zelensky reached there by mm. so even zelensky landed up he in, made a comment immediately yeah, he made, yeah. he made or he, of he course he would also, right? he did right everyone did he is so, a putin critic who so died right i think i think uh, uh, western media all media 
ours is no different by the way as we as we um, grow in stature and and capabilities and spread we will see the same uh, we use these moments as um, the rhetoric around the core message we want to transmit yeah. so if the if the message we want to transmit is that we have to defeat putin then all of these become the peg on which we hang that message right so uh, in some sense uh, uh, the commodification of human experience is true on each side of the battle today okay so it is uh, the west is also using mm. these moments uh, uh, for their own uh, comms purposes you know strategic communications as say the russians would yeah because immediately uh, kamala harris was in conversation uh with his wife yeah. so uh, you know so, on the so one hand so ye dekhiye aapne commodification kar di human na? experience ko apne ek more commodify to ye ye bada natural hai aur wo hua hmm. so but usse kya hua uh, you had a few people including some who will be that they are rising on this week who said that you know this is uh, he was killed and he was murdered and this is uh, 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 reflective of the regime and this and that and, you know partly true partly wrong uh, hmm. wholly true wholly wrong i am not going to pass judgment to on that but the fact is all of these incidents become part of the story mill and they go into the you know yeah. the line of production of what people want to actually try and transmit let's so talk about uh, raisina hmm. uh, because uh, raisina 2024 we are all looking forward to it um how many speakers are there this time and uh, your theme chaturanga if you can explain to our viewers what it means also the other thing is that um, how can people watch this where can they watch this if you can tell us because lots of people want to be, i mean these some of them are closed door sessions um some of them are not beamed directly so if you can tell me how can people participate you know first of all on the issue of participation i must uh, confess that there has always been a temptation to do this in a bigger venue the number of uh, your interest the, the amount of interest that is expressed to participate is huge tens of thousands of people have written in Uh, to want to come in uh, we unfortunately can't accommodate everyone we have our biggest room is 800 people or 750 people right mm. so uh, i cannot um, uh, see um, uh, a very tiny fraction of those who are truly interested mm. to actually be able to participate a very small fraction will actually be able to come so apologies for that but all our sessions are available on youtube Uh, I will try to convince A and I also to carry <laughs> some of them uh, but uh, certainly over the next week every conversation that is uh, uh, open in uh, in uh, nature will be available online which are going to be close to 110 such conversations right we are hosting 110 different conversations over the next two and a half days of oh, sorry from wednesday to friday and we will try and put each of those out in the next 7 to 8 days uh, all the big room panels main room panels and the main lunch room panels will be streamed live so uh, people can watch it as it happens and uh, the side rooms uh, will be recorded and post produced and and made available to everyone there are a few of the record conversations thodi hame bhi apni hansi mazak ki baatein karni hoti hain you won't find them interesting anyways so wo humne hata diya hai so uh, those are maybe only three or four of them which are not going to be available which are uh, which are uh, our attempt to try and create a space where people can have serious significant conversations without uh being judged by others so we have certain very small three or four of them only so raisina is open by nature we are only limited by our capacity to host people mm-hmm. but humne kya kiya is bari uh, because there were a lot of complaints and demands and and also uh, pleadings we have this year got in nearly 300 students so uh, out of the 10% of my total attendee list is now under 20s so i think that's important i r related does uh, i r related econ- economics we we discuss everything from gender yeah. to climate to finance, to, to finance. Yes. so it, ours is a broad tent hmm. uh, uh, forum right unlike the munich security conference yeah, which or, is security or the shangri la yes. dialogue which is huh. defense and security yeah. ours is the global governance conference which huh. does defense security but also does climate and labor and technology and and gender and uh, sustainable development so we have a, a large cluster of students if i remember correctly 68 institutions from 38 cities in india alone oh, so okay. we have students coming in from so many parts of the country we have 115 countries 115 countries coming in this year which is a, a good uh, 10 more than last year right so we have a large cluster of 3000 plus folks from and 115. speakers how many speakers sare 300 speaker hai hamare wow that's wow nahi hai that is a, that is my tragedy in my life when you have 350 speaking roles and 3000 people attending uh, every person thinks they are a speaker 
Yes, you please understand the pressure. Now, I have broken 2700 hearts because mm. everyone believes they deserve the mic and they need to be on the stage and someone else is getting their chance. मैंने किसी और को दे दिया तो नो वन लाइक्स मी एट द एंड ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस बट सो बी इट बट एज अ क्यूरेटर आई हैव गॉट यूज्ड टू द आईडिया दैट एंड दे लव इट कम ऑन सो बट राइसिना हैज बिकम अ रेड लेटर डेट मिड फेब एवरी ईयर कि इफ एनी वन्स ऑफ यू नो फॉलोइंग फॉरेन पॉलिसी दैट वे इंडिया में दिस इज द बिग वन इट इज द यू नो फॉर फॉरेन पॉलिसी का कुंभ बन गया ये फॉरेन पॉलिसी का कुंभ तो मुझे प्लीज आप समझाओ हाउ टेल मी हाउ इट स्टार्टेड and how did it mature into this uh, you know, huge thing 10 uh, years uh, ago uh, yeah. right see i'll i'll tell you the origins are uh, are are actually uh, interesting it was 2012 when uh, this was i think upa 2 hmm. 2012 i was turning for i turned 40 and i said you know we have to build something now hmm. it was early days of my career in orf and i wanted to uh, invest in something new and different and i had just been to shangrila and in fact i'll tell you what uh, peak my interest i had that year been to halifax hmm. or or you know that's pata hai mujhe ha halifax gaya tha main do halifax kitna khush hua bhai halifax ka naam sunke there's a halifax in america also so 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 halifax yeah so i saw these people had uh, are bringing together global hmm. voices hmm. in small spaces putting them into a into a into a arena and making them discuss global issues there so small countries which have actually very little implication on world affairs became important just by bec- uh, by becoming the epicenter of the ideas that yeah. were being discussed and debated and perhaps some of them would shape the future it piqued my interest so i went to uh, the government of the day and i reached out to the joint secretaries and uh, 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 others who i knew and um, uh, there was a very um, Uh, in, in you know strong determined uh, secretary we had sujata mehta at that time mm. who was secretary er she liked the proposal and she says let's do uh, uh, something which is global so um, of course at that time india was still in its transition from its previous state to where it is now and uh, uh, she curtailed the the geography uh, that i could engage with to the indian ocean region mm. so i did my first uh, avatar or mm-hmm. the first variant of the raisina dialogue in 2013 in uh, in the uh, you know in the last decade with 28 countries in cochin mm-hmm. and i think it was a resounding success we got 100 people mm-hmm. in cochin in that small uh, hotel that we were hosting it in and i thought it was really really good Uh, but that was it. Then, you know, Sarkar Badli or hmm. and it was uh, limited to Indian Ocean region only. Indian Ocean region. Twenty eight. Now it's important. But 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 So then, eventually, when uh, the uh, the current minister, the, that time foreign secretary, um, 2015, when he took charge, um, uh, his uh, his office had reached out that they were inviting a number of think tanks to come and start thinking about building such global um, uh, convenings, and uh, uh, would uh, we be interested? So we went and we met, and uh, uh, I think uh, between him and uh, the, the his uh, his team. he was foreign secretary so between the foreign secretary and his team the idea of raisina dialogue somehow caught all our imaginations mm-hmm. and uh, uh, i could see that the foreign sec- for the first time i realized that the foreign secretary was actually a think tank head mm-hmm. so you know he, 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 that is his, that is his hidden personality you don't but dr jayshan yeah 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 he's okay. a think tanker he's a think tanker in disguise so you know he's 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 actually better than most think tankers are in terms of you know being able to, to an academic in no you he know he wears many hats actually you know the, he does but i'm saying yeah. i saw that think tank side of him okay. so i i could all you know i could sense that uh, there was this latent hmm. he has this latent uh, uh, desire hmm. to be uh, uh, hmm. you know putting together these interesting fora and hmm. interesting hmm. Um, uh, frame, frameworks so he says shuru karo and he told me just a few things at that particular point of time uh, th- we didn't have the name and we didn't have anything but he he did say he, he he was absolutely transparent and he says we are going to be funding these four or five different uh, institutions we want to see uh, which one has the legs eventually and and they did so they funded quite a few five or six think tanks and i think a few ran for two years few ran for three years 
one is still running alongside us uh, uh, some have changed and you know it's mm. ha- happened but raisina somehow caught everyone's imagination and uh, it was one of those five projects that started at particular point of time because of that moment because of the branding because of uh, dr jay shankar's own mm. uh, desire to but raisina is not a think tank it's part of orf and raisina dialogue is an event that you have just in case um, some of our viewers and listeners who live abroad don't understand that concept so uh, but uh, like i said about uh, the raisina dialogue you have a different theme every year hmm. so tell us about this theme of chaturanga this year you know chaturanga is also uh, uh, first of all you know chess I, game right yeah it's it's a battle formation a, 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 no a battle, a, a, it's a, it's a, she's right you know you have, that's mm-hmm. why i'm saying she, she's right she's the boss <laughs> okay so 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 it is it is the uh, earlier avatar of um, uh, chess of of shatranj so if you can now see the lineage from mm. chaturanga to shatranj to mm. chess you know it, that's the mm. lineage um uh, in the as the story goes this was also something that uh, mandodri and ravan Mm. uh used to uh, you know in some sense uh, uh, play mm. or you know engage one mm. and th- th- that's a fable right the okay. stories i mean uh, but uh, it is something that so is so it's connected with mahabharat as well as ramayan of course uh, so it's very interesting because it's a it's a board game that cuts across our uh, and persia because shatranj uh, Kesha, our, so our vedic history so, uh, yeah. our, our our land it belongs to our land Let and me also east way. asia right a chess Sub-kuch. game is there even in uh, japan yeah. and uh, china also historically have pay- played uh, correct. those kind of games correct correct so so it it is our it is ours it's a oriental eastern eastern hemisphere um, uh, game board game uh, that's chaturanga but basically uh, it was also a battlefield strategy game which mm. was how do you use your various pieces the elephant tree the chariots the horsemen the the pawn, yeah everything. right how do you yeah. organize them uh, because armies used to maintain order in that era hmm. right uh, these were the instruments of peace order influence uh, and political conduct so and we rules, still do that the cavalry first goes then the infantry yeah, yeah. so <laughs> rules based order uh, has a has a rather grim undergirding right it is yeah. based yes. on guns and bullets right of course so uh, guns and roses baad mein logon ne kar diya but guns and bullets were the uh, the 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 keepers the guarantors of yeah, the yeah. order so these this board game was where uh, uh, which in in many ways uh, people engaged on to uh, in different ways to maintain order so what we decided to do this time was that uh, the world today is very different also right. conflict is a major theme uh, you know with uh, the russian war the israel hamas conflict these are co- conversations which are going to come up in Deekho, the right conflict uh, conflict hamara kya hai conflict contest cooperate create nahi mujhe walon mein charo naam mujhe charo term walon mein so uh, uh, sirf thoda jet lag hai par <laughs> par uh, conflict contest cooperate create in in plain speak conflict is what is happening in terms of hamas contest mm. is what is the systemic uh, dynamic vis-a-vis china and different people are con- you know in different forms of contest with them uh, cooperate uh, i would say symbolizes for example the indian g20 presidency very mm. strongly that we were able to create a consensus there be talk of vishwamitra i'm sure as compared to vishwaguru and those kind of conversations will also happen where it's india turned around and said that thoda usko hum aage ja rahe hain ab hum solutions framework ki taraf badhna chahiye abhi dosti kar li aur wo sustainable development correct correct SDGs, those yeah. correct those conversations are happening so what do we now a post 2030 world for example yeah. right um, and uh, um, create is of course uh, ai and upi and you know the the marvelous new Uh, uh inventions innovations um even policy frameworks that are enabling us to mainstream people bring them on board uh, take development governance and an opportunity to those who aspire for them so, so there'll be conversations on ai too yes there's a conversation on ai where we have open ai where we have servam ai which is the indian servam ai yes uh, where we have uh, meta <laughs> and the facebook team which is building their own uh, 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 platform so we have a good ai conversation as a couple of them so tech is big Uh, development is big of course geopolitics continues to be uh, the uh, one of the mainstays mm. of the conference but 
this these were the four realities of our time that there is a conf- there are conflicts we can see them there yeah. is contest which is palpable there is a cooperation at a certain in certain spaces at a certain level and there is creation happening all around us mm. right so this is the world we live in now in this kind of a world where you have to deal with these four shades of blue as it were <laughs> uh, if we are if we are the blue planet if there are four shades of blue then what is the chaturanga for today what is your strategy of navigating this world how can you be prepared for conflicts how can you be how can you have the gumption for contest mm. how can you seize the opportunity to cooperate and how can you invest in producing stuff and creating solutions that the world so desperately needs so i think the new battlefield is of, of managing these four dynamics that shape our world this is the title chaturanga conflict contest cooperate create right um On the fifth of February, the Home Minister, uh, Mr. Amit Shah, released the ORF Foreign Policy Survey for 2023. Let's discuss the key findings of that uh, survey uh, on foreign policy. The survey reveals that India's urban youth has given a positive rating to the country's foreign nee, policy. नहीं मैं एक मिनट इंटरव्यू कर लूँ? हाँ, सर. Podcast में कर सकते हैं. बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं. ये रिटन नहीं होगा. Go ahead. अच्छा. नहीं मेरा ये था कि first of all, Home Minister, his address at ORF and then his discussion thereafter i think that is what was desperately needed he was so good hmm i if saw you, the speech if yes. you see his speech yes you know everyone talks about strong man muscular approach zero tolerance he also spoke about it yeah. but if you read his speech he he came he was very clear we will give development we are number one we want to focus on development make everyone lives better second infrastructure and investments number 3 let's go and uh, do deals you know let's negotiate let's agree let's create agreements with everyone who has mm. problems with us and only fourth was the muscular zero tolerance approach to picking up the gun or terror and stuff like that i think he laid out a vision uh, on um, on uh, the indian inter- internal security mm. which in many ways is uh, very important for our external relations you know people yeah. who are engaging with us should have a very clear eyed view of what india's internal security and architecture is and it's not is. in silos it is not you know, in silos like, that's the yeah. point i'm trying to make that that uh, it was important that uh, inter- uh, internal security dialogue or uh, internal security uh, vision was um, presented so that those who engage with india understand what we stand for i think he his speech was really important log humse puch rahe the ki foreign policy survey kyun yeah why by the home minister internal security yeah. is a is a is defining driver of our international engagement and our external external engagement external engagement is basically a mirror Correct. of what the internal Correct. security situation Correct. is yeah. so i think that is the reason so i'm just saying yeah. you no no that makes sense because especially for foreign audiences you know young uh, mm. people who don't understand the complexities of how the indian security so system works so and i have i i have really requested him if we can make this an annual exercise that the home minister presents an internal security vision every year and perhaps we do a few panels after or before where we can bring in engage you know where we can engage expert india needs an uh, uh, i was telling someone india's internal security is not internal security we are a continental security our security implicates the world you know it's like european security european security is like 20 you know eu is 28 e27 countries so uh, india is a little bigger so oh. so you know europe, europe mein uh, unka between countries kya hota hai is a global issue yeah hamara bhi global issue like asean hmm. is you know if you see asean it's like a one uh, country thing you know asean security is something that it impacts asean as a whole not just indonesia not just Similar, like the eu like, like EU. eu right what's yeah. happening in the eu but you invited him for to make this a yearly thing yeah I, I, on I an election i hope year. he does mm-hmm. i yeah. hope he does uh, and it took a good 7 months to convince him to come here for the first and time and maybe a larger one you know like larger uh, like larger. you uh, yeah maybe the mandapam or something or maybe take it out of delhi Uh, like could G20 be. Went, I, I, I right? think I think maybe uh, Delhi has enough. It's time to uh, build Move. a new venue for our internal security. I And like by the way, this did. is a international. This is a international conversation by design, because look at the tech elements. Look at the trans-border partnership elements. Look at cyber cooperation elements. Look at even uh, issues around mon- financial flows. You know, no yeah. money for terror that India hosted that conference yeah. last year. Uh, uh, internal security dialogue has all elements that make it a international blockbuster conversation. You know, if I if I put yeah. on my Uh, conference organizers hat it has all the elements that require great international speakers and india by the way and how it responds to many of these challenges is the template for the world uh, since uh, i was uh, my point very quickly i'm coming back to the survey 
India's UPI or UPI-like solutions will serve 7 billion people. Hmm. The MasterCard and Visa card serve the first billion. UPI will serve or UPI type arrangement will serve the next 7 billion. We produce for everyone. Similarly, how India navigates the security challenges around digital spaces, around transborder financial flows, around crypto and other is a template for everyone. What we are able to do at scale and, and the, the constraints of budgets and, and, and um, uh, the, the heterogeneity of our society, if we are able to produce solutions that keep us secure, this is, this is an export for us. Like yeah. we export UPI, we will export uh, a safe UPI. Like we export, you know, uh, digital India, we will, in, uh, we will uh, export a safe digital India with a right. hashtag, you know, safe. safe yeah. Right. The so you'll have to pause your question for a second because I still want to ask another thing over here. So you talked about the internal security. Agle saal bhi aapne invite kiya hai. You are also in Munich. You're talking to thought leaders. You're talking to foreign leaders. You've seen all this. This is an election year as well. In your interactions uh, with them and seeing their interaction with Indian uh, government officials, as I look that they, you know, that they know that these guys are going to come back ha, ha. and repeat it. Hmm. Bilkul. Uh, uh, see, look. The uh, world wants continuity. Basically, see, PM has also said that he's already getting invites from other nations to come for the uh, yeah, after the elections over. Sunday. Yeah, he's already said that in Saturday. So, yeah. mere samne, uh, abhi unne, uh, you know, a couple of people were. A um, couple of people are already planning events with um, uh, the foreign minister and others in June, in July, in August. So I've already started seeing uh, conversations happening there. But to be fair, none of them are either committing or or even responding to those requests at this time. Because at the end of the day, we it are is a an election. There's an yes. election and, and people have people express themselves once in five years and that expression has not yet been completed. Now, it, so that is the internal conversation on how we select our governments. Uh, your question is what is the expectation from yes. outsiders are they are they is, is my sense that they are uh, a continuity they, they are they yeah. are uh, betting on continuity uh, i let me put it bluntly i think they may or may not like it but they see the government returning so yeah. there are so there are there are two kinds of responses hmm. uh, but uh, generally the large spectrum of responses say they are coming back some of them may not like it yeah, because before in in an election year, whenever we would uh, go as journalists to any of these conferences, whether it's at ASEAN, at EU, or uh, any of journalists, so I said some of them may not like it. Ah, I didn't ask anyone who does not like it. I was going to go there. I was going to go there. I full toss. I gave full toss. I gave full toss. So obviously, in Europe, there will be nervousness. No, it should be in America. Look, I'm going to ask me. Who is nervous? Look. This uh, it's a it's a very interesting category of people who know that it is likely to happen and are slightly uh, uh, remorseful about that possibility. Or American slightly. media, American think tanks. I would nee, say. Wo, wo to, uh, oh, Listening to your Munich thing, uh, uh, in which you said that America has to come to terms with the fact and one of them I paraphrasing where he mm. says America has to come because American media doesn't like India American think tanks are wary of India but they have to come to terms with the fact that the India story is going to be told by Indians and not by a western construct no that's true so you know I think there is a displacement of the erstwhile elites if I could use that term those who were ruling the roost mm. those who were the largest beneficiaries of globalization of of uh, Pax Americana, of of uh, the uh, Atlantic-centered uh, uh, world order. And by the way, those are everywhere, right? Uh, so, uh, those people ha ha are displaced even at home. So, you, what, we are, what we have to realize is, uh, there's a very interesting constituency in international relations now. There's, a, there's, a, there's an element which was a nice centrist left, of, sorry, a nice left of center constituency that is neither sellable to that side of the debate anymore because the progressives have taken over. They've been crowded out by the loud, shrill, yes. uh, mm. uh, the further left in their parties. The loony left. The, uh, the lo uh, Let's lo just call it that. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, the loony left and the loony right have yeah. crowded out the centrist left and the centrist right. So the Bush, Clinton, right and left yes. uh, are pretty much out of vogue. Yes. Mm. Right? Mm. Uh, they have the Trump right and the Sanders kind of left 
are the the bunny sanders kind of left are the uh, dominant yeah, voices are the now. dominant voices in media spaces public sphere domestic politics international relations may america is not bothered they are they are fighting their mm. own battles their enemies at home as far as america is concerned they have to so yeah. india is watching other. with concern on their democratic processes we of should course. be we, we, are, we yeah. should be we should be concerned because it uh, a safety of our people there i mean you see attacks that are happening against indians and of i course. think uh, it's it's terrifying that uh, 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 the uh, the race based uh, hate yes. that is now beginning to take shape courtesy this kind of demonization of of others uh, we were all warning people about this that don't keep demonizing don't keep creating uh, fictional uh, 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 stories and accounts of how uh, other geography people in other geographies live if you do that then people start dehumanizing them and attacking them and that's happening by the yes. way in 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 your country as well in 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 oh uh, sorry in 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 canada in canada which is well. not my country but <laughs> i'm saying this is a this is dangerous right what is happening we should be concerned yeah. but i think the people who know that there is a high likelihood of the return of the current administration mm. in india and who are unhappy are those displaced people so you mm. it's not right or left it is actually the 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 center pillar that uh, who had a very cozy consensus hmm. irrespective of who wins elections both of us win you know it was like ah. uh, you are left of center i am right of center uh, my wife is here my my son is here uh, and you know uh, uh, i am a i am a university professor i have covered all political bases i am uh, uh, i i am uh, So, so you what did they want with India? So what did they want from yeah, India? Exactly. Indian so election. What they want from India is exactly what that center pillar in India wants from India. Mm. Talk to us, give us attention, give us love, huh. uh, give us back our importance, give us back the perch. Uh, when mm. we speak, please treat this as gospel. When we talk about economic policy, please uh, tell the RBI governor to take notes and and implement it. When we talk about uh, defense procurement, that should be the mm. med- platform mm. India should be acquiring. The 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 entitlement that they have lost is mm. what they seek back and i think that is the that is the constituency that uh, may not be excited by the fact that india is going to see continuity most others are betting on continuity i keep telling them but we have elections yeah. in, in april and may and indian elections unlike in other parts of the world are genuine elections where people go and exercise their will mm. and people go and surprise uh, 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 many times as well it is not uh, based yeah. on uh, uh, you know getting people out and voting uh, uh, yeah. like in you know uh, in the us it is literally about how many of your supporters can you get out to vote mm. uh, that's how the election in the us is decided in india you can get people out to vote but who they vote for you don't know you, don't know. you know and our indian voter is very smart you go and take a survey he will give you the answer that you want to hear he will go out and he'll go in and vote or she will vote declared right in Correct. the american system you have to declare whether you are you're a republican or you so people actually register yeah. and declare themselves Correct. to so, be republican so they take side then so there are there's know. a very small bunch of independents so, yeah. who are the swing voters there yeah, i want to distill all of that which you said to a simple <laughs> thing ki hamara jo foreign policy hai is it become this ascending sort of very agile now for these sort of western constructs to pehle the that this is indian foreign policy it will follow a certain template and that template has sort of been shattered Look, in the last 10 years everyone was telling me everyone on the sidelines who say that uh, uh, indian uh, and of course look uh, uh, all uh, b- my biases and clear um, own assessments aside uh, it is absolutely true that in the last 10 years there has been a transformational change in how the world assesses views and appreciates india mm. uh, appreciation sometimes today is grudging mm. but it exists appreciation sometimes is is sometimes more vocal than it ever was mm. so you have clearly a, a large cohort of international experts mm. international people who uh, are more vocal about what india has done and uh, i'm going to be airing a panel i hosted in munich tomorrow Hmm. uh it was with uh, with the indian foreign minister with margaret westeyer who's the uh, executive vice president of the european union uh, uh, mm-hmm. prince faisal from his highness prince faisal from saudi arabia right. yeah foreign minister yeah. stephen harper yeah. from uh, canada and 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 of course uh, uh, i also had uh, a very very uh, megan osuleman a very bright uh, director of the belfer center kennedy she does phenomenal work on on international relations so i had this very good bunch of five people who were discussing uh, the uh, who were in a conversation under the theme vishwamitra 
uh, mm. bridging divides that was the theme of the panel a lunch panel one and a half hours of fun conversations but i think even in that panel margaret vestier she was talking about the digital opportunities and challenges but she was most vocal about india's transformational deployment of technology to change lives to save lives Uh, during the pandemic post the pandemic the upi and before the pandemic so i think there is a uh, people who understand the world appreciate india people who still view the world through the political lens uh, view india through that political lens yeah mm. right even and though there's something else uh, on they, the ground they, they, they don't interested. want to watch Dekhe, it they don't want to see it hamare duniya mein teen log hain ek fact based assessment karte hain in which we will be given higher ratings than we were given 10 years ago that hmm. it, it is undeniable hmm. whether it is the economic situation technology situation uh, international partnership situation climate you know take Data any sector hmm. right uh, fact based we will be given higher marks political lens depends on where you are hmm. and uh, i think those should be ignored hmm. it's as simple as that so yes uh, i think many people are betting on continuity uh, i always uh, caution them that we have elections yeah I'm you know, sorry, I don't want to hijack your podcast. No, but not ek, hijack. Nee, wo ORF pe aa jaye us survey pe. But now I just okay. want to flip this. Should India bet on continuity in America? Because now you're seeing things that are America talks about democratic processes and all that, and they're very concerned about uh, court cases and everything. But this re- in India that happened. Abhi jo recent case I, about uh, Trump hand, be, being handed this fine of almost half a billion in a civil fraud case in New York. I mean, this will hamp. It will go to an appeals court and everything. But this, it seems like it's been a uh, a prosecutorial thing against a uh, presidential India, candidate. See, India, opposition leader had so many cases against him. Uh, uh, New York Times would have headlines about how Indian democracy is dead, mm. and India. So is the State <coughs> Department spokesperson said. Uh, that, they're that, that they are looking at what they are looking at what they are looking the carefully at what is happening. Right, correct. But we don't. This is the Rahul Gandhi defamation case that happened in uh, Gujarat. Yeah, with where you had European yeah, parliament, changed. you had European parliamentarians, you had, uh, you had the state. I mean, the official spokespersons talked about a legal Haan, process so right. in India. So I think uh, what is happening in America is tragic. It is a tragedy that um, you are seeing politically appointed judicial officers. Yes. Uh, ju- politically appointed. Investigative officers—they are all politically appointed by the way. Yeah. Yes. It's not as if they are the permanent bureaucracy that uh, transcends re- 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 regimes in America. They are politically yes. appointed. The DA in New York is a Democrat. Is a Democrat. Yeah. So politically appointed judicial officers, investigative officers, regulators—they are all politically appointed. The AG, sorry. Are targeting a political opponent, and it is shameful that there is not a squeak from the defenders. in fact there is celebration that american democracy works because uh, people that we appoint target people who don't like us mm. you know there is a celebration about in american democracy because they can use uh, their their own appointees to target their opponents and somehow that system is great and somehow our newspapers celebrate that system as well abo karna chahiye how long live america series ek karni chahiye you know but but, but you know but, no but the irony the, is the, my point here this. is that we uh, you ask me a this is the important. upholder of democracy in the world right supposedly yeah. the oldest democracy but point, and everything but see my point here is that india has to be uh, not betting on community in in the case of america india has to be prepared for a storm it doesn't matter who comes back america is going to be a disruptive act- actor in the global system for at least a generation till the till finally uh, uh, the concept of white america ceases to exist there is a big trans demographic transition underway which is age and ethnicity that is going to begin to express itself through these crazy election results and electoral outcomes and and uh, processes it will take a good decade a decade and a half before america finds its new normal uh, the old uh, midwest america is gone uh, uh, the new uh, global america is not yet in charge uh the 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 browning of america is underway and uh, till such time that it finally begins to take shape uh, in terms of uh, uh, its influence we are going to have these battles so america is a disruptive actor uh, if trump comes be prepared for tariffs be prepared for a, 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 a island america hmm. where uh, you are going to have um, uh, you know trade wars or at least uh, punitive trade measures deployed against certain countries um 
punishment to everyone. So there's going to be collective punishment. Everyone who, <laughs> every and anyone who had a phone call with Biden will be punished <laughs> because he said first few days in office I'm going to target people who were against me, which means basically uh, 120 world leaders who may have shook hands with Biden over the last <laughs> five years. So I think we have to be ready for the fact that uh, uh, Trump America will be very different but uh, um, a democrat america may no longer may not also be very conducive to uh, uh, the kind of international uh, uh, you know frameworks that uh, they themselves uh, right. uh, created in the last century mm -hmm. so irrespective of who's in power america is a disruption we will have to manage so the self appointed sort of stewards of the world upholders of democracy nee, nee kahi. Wo, they will remain they'll remain that they will remain see mm -hmm. uh, like some i was reading a tweet by someone that there are some countries who are large and there are some countries who are rich rich there is only one country that is that is large and rich so uh, uh, you know that is that is a tr that is a true so there's a change uh, uh, in in the in the us how is that going to impact on the quad how is that going to uh, impact on other uh, organizations that we are part of other associations uh, on the indo pacific ni quad bhi to dekhiye american transactionalism is their exceptionalism by by uh, by by, by, and by huh. partisan by partisan by partisan exceptionalism is by partisan and exceptionalism basically means uh, tra transactionalism mm. in america mm. america will have no qualms about being your best friend in the court mm. because they see a merit in uh, restricting china or containing china or pushing back against uh, the chinese spread uh, in that particular part of the world they will have no qualms about embracing you we are aware of it and that's why we are also i think as india we have taken measured mm. uh, uh, steps in terms of what we want to do and what we will not do mm. in certain groupings right but the americans would be very happy to embrace you for a particular specific purpose special purpose vehicle quad is a spv, SPV as SPV, far as america yeah. is concerned quad is a spv for us uh, we are trying to make it into a broader uh, purpose vehicle for them it's a very specific purpose vehicle mm. right uh, and uh, uh, at the same time while they do this uh, this great uh, uh, you know when they build this relationship with you in the indo pacific they'll have no qualms about imposing tariffs on you mm. on your on your refined products on your uh, manufactured products, uh, you know, make America great again and being part of Quad are not, uh, uh, you know, mutually exclusive. They'll be happy riding both sides. So in with America, you'll have to now deal with a, like we've always dealt mm -hmm. with America because, you know, we were never part of the cozy club of the Americans. We always had to take the good and the bad when, when it came to America. We still do that, yeah. right? We still have to, we still have to uh, tolerate their sanctimonious, um, uh, you know, State Department reports on on the state of democracy and the state of multiculturalism <laughs> yes. in the state uh, right when it is difficult to walk five blocks from new york at 11 pm at night without getting beaten up because of your color right i've i've, I've been attacked twice in the last five years uh, so i i now refuse to go anywhere uh, i'm now you know in the evening you've been mugged in the oh yeah, yeah no no not mugged someone just came in uh, you know pushed me from behind and said, go back to your country mm. and I, you know so i mean probably he thought i was living there mm. uh, and, and you know uh, but I imagine people face that and my, my, my family there, my friends there, I face some incidents. So it's growing, right? And it's yeah. not necessarily uh, only restricted to us Indians. It's, I mean, it's generally yeah. against anyone who looks different, feels different. But it does so, seem like the, their green card process is targeted at Indi the Indians. The H-1B process, the green card process. I mean, you pay social uh, you pay social security, you pay Medicare tax and everything. But I guess if you're out of a job, you have 60 days to get another job, otherwise you have to uh, leave the country. So ease of e the ease of movement, Jayshankar, Dr. Jayshankar has also talked about this with his American counterparts. Did this ever come up? No, I I have not followed this particular debate, but mm -hmm. I do know that the single most important project for us is to be able to create a, a arrangement globally where we can make our young talent mm -hmm. fit for purpose for different geographies. So mobility arrangements, uh, whether they are in, in terms of citizenship or, or residencies or work permits, yeah. we will have to have a whole uh, uh, basket of arrangements with different parts. But coming back to, uh, coming back to America, uh, I think uh, it's an interesting eight to nine months. And, and to be fair, now if you, if you think about it, um, we were perhaps one of the few countries, if not the only country of significant size that... Uh, did well with Obama, Trump, and Biden. 
Bush also uh, 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 going and back. Bush, uh, and Bush, yeah. I mean, it's, it's Clinton's second term mm-hmm. onwards, right? Yeah. So, so we the have continuity. There, was, there has been yeah. a continuity, not in terms of their love for us alone, mm. but in our deft ability to to protect our own interest while we are but dealing with the, the changing that, nature you know, of the beast. From Bush era, they betted on India, yeah. even when India was not ready to bet on us. Or we were, ham log sharma rahe the. We were diffident, uh, you know. But they they saw uh, the nuclear deal was. One point, I feel. I mean, you've you've seen that. You've seen no, it no, very look, pretty Bush closely. No, no. Look, Bush bet on India of 2025 or 2024, where we are sitting today. He bet on exactly India being where we are today, and we are there. So actually, you know, you can all uh, ridicule Bush, but perhaps Bush was smarter than most uh, mm. uh, American uh, presidents in terms of thinking about where American foreign policy was headed. Yeah. Right. He, uh, despite the fact. that um, uh, there was uh, a compulsion on him to um, deal with the dictators in rawalpindi because of the war on terror mm, and, yes. and dealing with the taliban despite that he was determined to dehyphenate to create a separate special ex- exceptional relationship with india to bring yeah. india into a quasi nuclear framework you know give, give a quasi nuclear weapon state status to india yes, yes. he was determined to to undo uh, uh, the historical um uh, policies of america that had harmed and hampered the relationship in some sense so i think bush was visionary in uh, i don't think you'll get a bush again hmm. let me hmm. be very clear so uh, uh, you are also not going to get perhaps uh, uh, someone like a biden again biden was the last of the uh, of hmm. the old democrats who hmm. still looked at the world through uh, the prism of facts and not uh, uh, politics yeah. right He's which is why the, when he picks an anthony blinken Hmm. uh you know uh you're seeing a continuity uh you're seeing betting on india continuing uh, with the democrat uh, in power you're i mean look that. biden himself was betting on india right yeah. so biden was one of the large lo- loudest voices in india for the largest part of his career hmm. and him becoming president was like i said you're not going to get a bush and a biden again hmm. uh, be ready for disruptions you cannot bet on continuity in america you have to bet on america being very different and be ready for that be ready to absorb what's coming your way tariffs uh, transactionalism and perhaps even demands on 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 exceeding to american whims on certain geopolitical questions we will have to embrace them where it is good for us we will have to be drawing the line where we believe it is not in our interest and we'll have to be negotiating where we believe we could do something together uh, in a different avatar so we will have to be at our best with america uh, this government has done it by the way so the uh, uh, you know the uh, prime minister modi uh, during the trump years yes, his government navigated uh, it very well navigated trump very well uh, let's come back to the raisina dialogue um, are there going <laughs> to be conversations on china um because i mean that's the elephant in the room were there conversations uh, were the conversations sharp regarding china it, at the munich security conference at davos and what do you expect at raisina to happen you know i think one of the tragedies of our time is that because of our over obsession with some of uh, the conflicts that are currently underway uh, there is we have uh, there is a creeping acquisition of world affairs by china the creeping they are sitting it out in uh, you know expanding their influence uh, rebuilding their economy they are getting the room the space that they needed post the pandemic to recover at this time if the world was not embroiled in so many conflicts we could have actually put together a sensible framework to manage china for the future we have given china a free pass in the last two and a half years we have normalized their behavior uh because we see uh, more um uh, deviant actions you're saying we you're saying the world the world not uh, india uh, uh, i think uh, uh, i'm talking about the world here the world here i think india is perhaps one of the lone voices mm. uh, that uh, yeah, is not normalizing up, especially it. with with regard to so, our border issue yes. yeah yeah so so uh, i don't think india sees china if, see for us china is not based on a newspaper report na hamare to we have to handle 100000 yeah. of them who want to I have a cup of tea on our side of the border uh, yeah. every once in a while yes. so so for us it is a reality that has to be responded with uh, steel and 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 political will yeah. and and for us it is a daily question so for for us china is not a yeah. fiction right so china is there's a creeping surrender to china i i, I worry mm. that hum logo ne without deciding to uh, 
हमने मान लिया है कि देखिए चाइना इज नाउ वन ऑफ दोज पीपल हु वी विल हैव टू वर्क विथ टू सॉल्व द वर्ल्ड्स प्रॉब्लम्स नॉट रियलाइजिंग दैट हाफ ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स प्रॉब्लम्स माइट एक्चुअली बी बिकॉज ऑफ द वे द चाइनीज हैव बिहेव्ड एंड एंड वी हैव एक्चुअली गिवन देम अ फ्री पास ऑन ऑन देयर रोल एज एन इंस्टिगेटर ऑफ 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 ट्रबल Uh, uh, to now uh, sit with them on a table and find solutions to the What is Stockholm syndrome that yeah. you're falling in love with so, your own So China ke saath I think uh, uh, we have been uh, in fact even the American confused signals uh, it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense And also the the ruble you want trade and all that I mean the China is a huge partner of yeah. Russia's now and they are settling all their they uh, their sort of their receipts in uh, their local currency so the usd has been sort of sidelined over there this hip, this sort of hip, this is not uh, brought out by the western uh, voices normally you know there is a perhaps a smug belief perhaps a real belief that uh, uh, the challenge to the dollar is still very far away okay uh, while you may have a rural yuan Uh, trade hmm. the index is still the dollar yes. right uh, how do you decide uh, to price hmm. the transaction and i worry that that may change it may change faster than most economists predict there is a belief that de-dollarization is is uh, imminent is no is is uh, fiction is fiction. just talk oh, okay uh, uh, of course there is a is, uh, equally loud group that talks about an imminent de-dollarization hmm. i think the truth is somewhere in between Uh, this decade this decade could see significant changes before 2030 we could see uh, a significant challenge to our ideas coming up on how to deal with this where china wants to be the only voice forget about sharing space with another voice that they want to be the solutions or they want to be the guarantor of solutions to problems in asia as well as to the world of course they are being they are coming up you know you saw the minute um, the minute uh, the the saudi iran conversation was announced in the presence of the chinese mm. foreign minister you saw the entire american establishment rush to the kingdom mm. to talk to them so uh, of course people are seeing this and people are pushing back but i just worry that um, uh, it's sporadic and not systematic i don't think there is any strategic direction or assessment that either washington or brussels has made that sees china as the principal challenger for the stability of the international order that they built the okay. order they created is threatened not by russia it's threatened by china and yet their principal opponent is russia and not china and mm. i think that is the problem here mm. that that uh, russia is a tactical challenge china is a systemic strategic challenge and, and 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 your resources are still being deployed only to meet uh, uh, the small cut in your hand and not the big uh, cancer of growth mm. that is spreading in the international system Now you spoke about saudi and uae so, so let me come to west asia we have 9 million expats indian expats living there uh, so now when modi government's engagements have suddenly you know come into people's imagination everybody's focused on that and wondering what is this this is not something that they thought would happen uh, in the modi era everybody thought that india will move closer to israel and west asia i mean rather the the islamic countries are going to get ignored uh, by a bjp a, a hindu nationalist government as they used to say, term modi how has india's outreach towards these countries or modi's outreach personal outreach towards these countries how has that changed the dynamics of india's engagement with west asia uh, so you know i think i just want to add a, a, a caveat story. no 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 a story because you were mentioning Uh, uh, you were asking me about munich and you were talking about now the recent visit and i could uh, in my mind i could see the new temple and yeah uh, and and uh, the cultural diplomacy element uh, yes come into in the abu dhabi yeah. even in qatar abu dhabi, in getting qatar, back in, the right? indian navy the so, well. so i was just going through that but so you know just to answer interestingly this munich security conference was happening uh, just after uh, the the inauguration of the ram Raps temple no ram oh, ram there in india sorry please yes. understand that's a big, that's a big uh, sure right that was that is the biggie yes it's it's huge even it's huge. at the munich that's when coming back so so one it was it was happening after uh, uh, the the pran pratishtha of pran pratishtha in ayodhya yes and it was happening after the the launch of the uh, baps uh, swami narayan temple in abu dhabi swami narayan temple in abu dhabi so this was happening after that it played in people's mind 
so please understand that was also uh, really? uh, uh, yeah 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 that was also a a, a, a conversation starter in many uh, uh, meetings that i had in you know as we were either uh, standing in a coffee corner or going for a stroll uh, uh, to do terrible things that we should not be doing <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you know so uh, it was a conversation that was that was uh, frequent i mean so if i if i was uh, if i would have met 10 people i would have had that conversation five times so it was uh, half the conversations i had always had an element of it and interestingly um uh, i have a feeling that it has a far bigger international impact than we give it credit for and it has a uh, it ha- that it has proliferated to the foreign policy Mm. crowd tells you that there is a a a a certain dynamic that has evolved because of so what were they asking are they nervous that this has happened or no in fact uh, i found it i don't know i i think they get it okay look they get the importance of these symbols the 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 people of the book you know people who have grown up with their bibles and yes the and old and new testament the yeah. old and new testament and and of course then uh, uh, the holy book of the uh, of the muslims you know you look at the three yes, the three yes. people of the book the three large yes. communities they get this they get the importance of these things they understand ki isme ek isme ek bahut important identity ka question hai ek 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 maturity ek maturation ka question hai in many of them they saw that that fine now you know it's there so that is a big uh, step that had to be taken and it has been taken mm-hmm. i did not find to my surprise by the way because uh, some of these folks especially your media brethren in germany are you know they are uh, they are poor mans or poor humans uh, guardian in new york times you know it's like unke chote twins ko dal do wo german media mein hai same unka bhi sasural hai na isliye Uh, anyways <laughs> so so uh, moving on <laughs> so so uh, so you know i i i to my surprise i did not see oh my god what happened this th- no yeah. i was saying oh we saw that is very significant mm. very interesting it was great celebration the whole country seemed to be participating you know it was like oh, yeah. uh, uh, they they are getting to terms that this was a uh, so they didn't subscribe to what the way certain western media outlets but, uh, but i have really yeah. not seen too much of a negative coverage even in western media by the way even in the same usual suspects ek aad articles aaye but they have moved on to so i mean i uh, but uh, i'm just telling you that there is a un- there is a underlying impact of this cultural expression both in ayodhya and there after of course the cultural diplomacy in uh, uh, in abu dhabi and uh, uh, we should not uh, underestimate uh, its influence in 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 uh, in foreign policy that's and all that's all i wanted to say and the saudis how how do you think they they see this see there i read an article uh, today in fact they uh, i went to saudi arabia huh. i spent a week there exactly yeah uh, i spent one week there i've never spent a week even in delhi uninterrupted <laughs> so yeah, i went to saudi arabia for a week uh, i think that kingdom is remarkable look you can you can tell me you can you can accuse me of only going to places where uh, tourists the go the khan market of saudi arabia uh, uh, you can accuse me of all that huh. but you know we are not blind right we hmm. see things we go and we 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 try we we walk across the cordon and go to the other side and yeah. meet other people also and that's a very indian thing to do right you know th- that main to main to old bazaar mein gaya i went to the old bazaar there hmm. so maine kaha you know let's go so i went to the bazaars i went to uh, the new bazaar the old bazaars the, the shopping malls uh, that country is changing remarkable that country is also betting on its foundational relationship with the region chief amongst them being india so they want to normalize iran they ties with iran they want to proceed with israel irrespective of what happened on october 7th and now what uh, it's happening there uh, they tell me quite clearly that uh, uh, post hamas and uh, the mm. post the terrorist group there and post uh, a netanyahu style leader of israel we will find a new normal right so they are not blaming anyone for it they realize that there is a there is a cast of characters and circumstances that need to be navigated they are very pragmatic uh, similarly they are determined that their single most important bilateral is going to be india 
uh, of course, China will be big because the size is big and transactions are big. But what is strategic and real is going to be the relationship with India. Same is the case with the UAE, uh, perhaps even more loudly, even more vocally and even more demonstrably in, mm. in many ways. Right. Uh, 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 but the Saudis are pretty much there. Right. And both of them uh, have a huge admiration for um, uh, the the changes that have happened over the last 10 to 15 years. But most importantly, huge admiration for the benefits they have, that have accrued to them courtesy the diaspora there. And I think that you asked me the question on the diaspora, the, the large one. I think Indians in the Middle East, especially in the UE today, like I mentioned in one of my recent pieces, sit on the top floor. Those floors were reserved for Europeans and Americans. As you said, we are in each other's rooms. Yeah. So, 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 so there, for the first time, the CEOs and the C-suite of, of uh, public sector enterprises in the Middle East, of um, family offices, of sovereign funds. Yeah, they're not just managing the back office no, now. they are now the front office. They are the face, they are the mind, they are the brain, they are part of that team that is building that region, right? So, the transformation that took place in America from being engineers to... Uh, engineers and doctors to becoming uh, then uh, uh, the bankers and then becoming the, the unicorn owners yeah. and, and the head of uh, these mm. uh, tech giants. You know, that transformation is also underway in the Middle East. And therefore, the appreciation of India has also cho changed as our demographic rise in their own economies uh, becomes more uh, forceful and impact. So I think the diaspora has played a crucial role. Uh, uh, Samir, in your, when you host the Raisina dialogue... And, and by the way, diaspora ki chit bata ta hong? Mere ko Raisina ke baare mein bolne nahi dekha. Achha, puch le, Raisina ke baare mein puch le. Raisina, agle teen din mera Raisina rehne wala hai. Mere to break le aaya tha ki Raisina ke baare mein na sochu. Mere is liye puch rahi hu ki kya hota hai, aise talk shops mein na, there is... Raisina talk shop nahi hai. Achha, okay. Pehle wo... हाँ पहले मैं ये पहले मैं ये इसको रिजेक्ट करता हूँ इस मोशन को रासीना इज अ प्लेस वेर वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग डाइवर्सिटी डिफरेंस एंड डिसएग्रीमेंट्स सो दैट्स व्हाट आई वांटेड टू कम टू वी आर अ लोकेशन ओनली ग्लोबल एरिना इन द वर्ल्ड वेर वी प्लेस प्रीमियम ऑन डिसएग्रीमेंट्स बिकॉज़ अनलेस यू कैन वॉइस देम � we are trying to cancel disagreements. We are trying to mute disagreements. Raisina is disagreement central. We celebrate So, if disagreement thought. central, hai, hmm. then why is it that the voices, uh, certain voices don't come? Like, why is it that Pakistan is not yeah, there? Dekho, why is it... I will give you a visa the next time, I will call everyone. हाँ तो ये सवाल आप उनसे पूछो जो मेरी pay grade से बहुत हूँ पूछे हैं. मैं तो चाहता हूँ पूरी दुनिया आए. Disagreements, करे, but I am also Russia quite doesn't uh, get as much play. Yeah, as Lavrov ne aake, uh, 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 he's not uh, coming uh, this time. Why, is not he, why isn't he coming this time? The Russians. Are wo, uh, Brazilians have that foreign ministers meeting in G20. It's not as if he's not coming to Raisina mm. because of our election schedule and their G20 cycle. The so dates have coincided. Yeah, so it and becomes an American uh, muscle at Raisina if you don't American have a Russian. American muscle, America bhi koi nahi aara, tum kya baat kar rahi ho? Ah, to Rich Verma is coming. Yeah, Rich Verma is. Indian muscle in America. Atul Kashyap is coming for USIBC. But if you look at the ministerial, if you look at the ministerial presence, you have a strong contingent from Africa. You have a strong contingent from our region. You have a strong contingent from South, Central and Eastern Europe. You have a, you have a strong contingent. Global South. No, Global South. No, North too. Can you reveal if someone from Iran is coming? Iran is coming from Iran, but Iran is not coming from Iran. There are women from Iran who are coming. There are six women. You know, how many people talked about Iranian women last year? Somebody is doing a podcast, I've heard, on the Iranian women. Yes, on Iranian women. You are doing it with them. So, in Raisina, our ANI is a partnership. We are focusing on the women of Iran. And we want to bring... So, listen. Who is going to do this? You guys have to do it. We have to do it. We have to... We have to take the... We have to take the other side of the stories or maybe the real stories. But I remember last year at that, uh, and I'm not going to let you get away with the, not talking about it. Uh, what happened at uh, Raisina last year when the, the foreign ministers came down and uh, when uh, you were called the fifth Beatle. Yeah, yeah. So where, uh, where, where Anthony Blinken called me the fifth Beatle. You're yeah. like, you're one of us. You're the fifth Beatle. He has not heard me sing in the shower. That's first. <laughs> number one. And, and two, I think... Uh, uh, I, I think uh, he ex he displayed a, a, a rare uh, uh, moment where 
he could actually admit hmm. uh, and you know this is big for america no, now but what happened was that the four of them came and they were there was this how was the show i joined yeah. dosti yari mein niche vibes were like positive like you know they had the satisfied look on their faces yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. smiles so maine pucha ki bade khush lag rahe ho kya kya ho raha hai why you smiling maine kaha you so happy kuch zyada agreement tha zyada agreement tha so maine pucha ki kuch chal raha hai fir wo ek do log phone pe bhi the to maine beech mein pucha do you have a whatsapp group ki mujhe lag raha tha ek dusre ko during panel message na kar rahe ho you know something sometimes so then he called me the fifth beatles but it was i think uh, his way of suggesting for me in geo in in a in a foreign policy perspective he actually it was an american admission of the nature of the court mm. which means or do business a, a, with india is getting easier that also. when you want yeah. to play a song that all of you like you come and be a band but otherwise you can the japanese uh, said yeah, exactly, that we are yeah. we are like a, a band yeah but a soft beatle where each of us can have our solo our solo songs. albums and our <laughs> and our smaller groups so, so i think so that metaphor got stretched but it was very uh, but very i think it was so very powerful, powerful. to describe what the chord is yes. yeah. that we will make music together it doesn't mean that we can't make music alone and music with others it means that yeah. that we come together and we also produce music Absolutely. so i think yeah. that is a great metaphor for uh, the, the the foreign policy importance of chord mm. as, as it were but, but you had the russian out there who was very uncomfortable with this music which was happening the russian like, uh, I, the russian, poor russian was also heckled yeah from the crowds during the question answer session as well yeah pure he heckled the crowd yeah he did this thing dono kar rahe the yani log boss usne globally troll kiya logon ko but you know possible he, you know, he was spending yeah. everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but tell me would he get this platform anywhere else yeah, yeah. and he he uh, in fact got after the host that you are asking softball questions you know i would have lost Americans. my job he got after my chairman yeah. Yeah. so anyways but so the chairman kept his uh, cool. Yeah, cool. Very nice. he was very, very nice very aggressive questions were yeah. also asked the line See, of he, questioning no, what i like no, about also what i like about a think tank is that they don't get rattled i mean a journalist who would have been hosting that yeah. could have probably got rattled but uh, because journalists See, because they, they make were, it about themselves na no? Nee, so uh, he 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 persisted politely with the line of questioning yeah. and uh, Lavrov continued with uh, being Lavrov so <laughs> you know, i think that's the best but way yes. to it but was fabulous uh, even uh, though there was sparks but you look at this now you look at this this is Lavrov and one hour before you had blinken yeah now th- this is celebrating disagreement yeah at that time and by the way they uh-huh. met at raisina yes so they also had a it was i think the first time that the two of them yeah, after, the war, yeah. after, after the, the war after the war yeah. so they also met so my point here is that in a world where all of us are so comfortable being in our cocoons and in our silos and in our comfort zones you require arenas where sometimes you can meet people who you may not always uh, look eye to eye look no agree with yeah. and i think that is the space so raisina is not a talk shop it is let's talk shop Mm. you know it's it's mm. it's a place where we try to make people tell us a little bit about the back uh, room talks which happen i mean we can't be part of that can't be a fly on the wall but are there is like fireworks which happen at the back which we don't see on stage ye dekho mujhe back stage kya hota hai kuch nahi malum hota hai teen din main food and beverage manager hu ki lunch time pe lag gaya coffee mil gayi gaadiyan aa gayi logon ka pickup ho gaya booking theek chal rahi hai Uh, we are roughly receiving 3000 plus people this year right and uh, at least half of them are staying in uh, in different hotels and and arrangements we we and they have made in the city so i am a mass a, a large tourist agency operation for the next 3 years we saw g20 and you know everything is important right each um, uh, the team around each prime minister and each uh, pre- president head of government head of state wants mera president aage ho लॉन्गेस्टिंग मिनिस्टर इन दिस रीजन <laughs> he is placed with these other ministers his name should be first we get request like this yeah right but i said no but that person is actually more senior to him you know he's been a, he's been a longer serving foreign minister uh, generally he's been in the business longer but uh, but you know he's the senior most in this region and that region has to be given prominence so you get uh, curious uh, request seating so you know in the inaugural day where is where are the chief guest seated where is the prime minister seated how far away am i from the prime minister i am on the right am i on the left i realize that sometimes 
as you rise in your careers and and yeah. political life and and stature in society uh, what is petty becomes more important <laughs> yeah it's like at, at some of these talk, uh, i'm not so going to say talk shop again but some of these Ta- like, hello talk shop ye hai jahan pe main baitha hu where we are talking talk shop. <laughs> that you know huh? um, like koi colonel hoga but obviously the colonel in the think tank sphere has done more work has written more papers knows more about his nahi mujhe to bola hai ki i will not commander aayega ha koi कोर कमांडर आएगा तो कोर कमांडर विल नॉट सिट विद द कर्नल मैंने कहा वो आपसे स्मार्टर है आपको मालूम है ये थिंक टैंक है उन्हें हुआ हुआ ये मेरे साथ कि मैं <laughs> मैं थ्री स्टार फोर स्टार हूँ ये पैनल <laughs> पे है मैं डिस्कशन टू हाउ कैन ही बी स्पीकर एंड हाउ कैन आई बी डिस्कशन ही इज दिस एंड आई एम दिस मैं रैंक में बहुत अच्छा हूँ मैंने कहा आर्मी में जाके बात कर लो पर <laughs> अगर यहाँ पे आ रहे हो तो यहाँ का जो माहौल कुछ माहौल है फर्क है या The yeah. the the rules in a think tank are based on your competence and intellect. Yeah, right? yeah. They are not necessarily necessarily based. Uh, it it could so happen. And by the way, it happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, some of our leaders in military mm-hmm. are phenomenal thinkers. And and to be honest, you know, General Patriots, Aquilino, yeah. Yeah. Harry Harris. I can name a few. Our our own, the late uh, General Rawat. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was a delight. I, yeah. I, I, in, in 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 for for being in a conference panel, he was forthright. transparent and you you may you may not have understood his grammar or vocabulary because he was different yeah. but he was always honest yeah. he responded to every question asked to him god bless his soul he was really good for raisina true but uh, with raisina you have multiplicity of views which come in you've also uh, authored books uh, with people on different sides of the political divide how do you maneuver that don't you get that view that is <coughs> my books are not about the politics here yeah? my books are about uh, policy so look essentially i truly believe that all of us have still spaces in our hearts and minds which are focused on real matters real issues and it is those spaces that i partner with hmm. i don't partner with your politics i am not interested in your election campaign i am not interested in who you vote for those are personal choices all of us are entitled to under the constitution and we should make them i am certainly interested in what you think about the future of the community mm. the future of the planet the future of certain sectors and domains and i find political leaders across the aisle uh, in india across the spectrum of pol- political ideologies exist who think like that mm. and 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 uh, 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 the fact is that you guys don't uh, focus on that right it doesn't sell eyeballs nahi milte jahan pe consensus hota hai eyeballs milte hain jahan pe difference hota hai to hum 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 jo discord hai usko highlight karte hain जो एग्रीमेंट्स हैं उसको उतना हाईलाइट नहीं करते क्योंकि नहीं करते भी होंगे पर उसको शायद लेग्स नहीं मिलते ऑडियंस डज नॉट लाइक टू हाईलाइट करते हैं एजेंसी बट बी आई मीन यू डू इट या बट बट इज वन व्हिच एक्चुअली गेट्स इनटू द न्यूज साइकिल सो इट डजेंट ट्रेंड इन सेंस इवन दो यू मे प्रोड्यूस इट Uh, it the the audience rejects it the yeah. the market may not in fact even with g20 the fact that a declaration happened despite all mm. became the story not th- so much that you know what the declaration was about correct but it was the fact that it was not supposed to happen correct so wo, uh, again usme ek negativity ne usko ek positive yeah. <laughs> trending karai it is very yes, interesting yes. Yeah. you know that that uh, against all odds against all odds that was the story there yeah Uh, so uh, that how many uh, people burnt the midnight oil had it to not do? been a, a, a um, ecosystem or an environment which was so divisive a consensus at the g20 would have been a norm hmm. right achieving a consensus your debates would have been on the substance of the g20 yeah, on consensus. the substance true And not on the fact that it happened right uh, anyways so yes um, i i have a uh, raisina dialogue 2024 for me is the end of a stage of raisina this is the ninth edition we are starting our 10th year so we are celebrating a decade of uh, uh, of this dialogue as as we enter this new uh, as we enter the 10th year we are celebrating a decade now so for for me there are two or three very clear takeaways that we have done well in phase 1 our phase 1 is over our phase 2 begins from next year and we will have to reinvent invest both our minds and and resources and create something which is uh, now compatible with the times we live in in the ai world in the world that has changed mm. so much since the time it was conceived it was conceived in a particular moment yes the world today is very different we criticize institutions for not uh, evolving and for not responding mm. to that change we should be equally critical on ourselves so raisina's next journey is going to be very different 
it is going to have a very different texture it's going to have a different feel it's going to have a different reach and i think that's the challenge for us how do you in reinvent raisina for the next decade interesting last year the chief guest of raisina i think you were responsible for those who are watching the the georgia meloni craze mm-hmm. that is there mm-hmm. on indian mm-hmm. social media she's amazing yeah first interview where we saw her was mm-hmm. you talking Correct. to her Correct. and her remarks obviously at the forum and mm-hmm. then she she our relationship with italy has just blossomed i think since then A- and and the hashtag melody melody came later but it the genesis but, but of the genesis was, genesis was like the genesis in 2023 yeah. 20 100% yeah. so yeah. is sal can you reveal who the chief guest is uh, it's, it's been announced now okay so uh, the chief guest is the prime minister of greece hmm. uh, and um, uh, he is going to be here with a big delegation um, uh, of both political leaders as well as uh businessman and you have turks too coming in we have turks we always have turks no what uh, i mean to say is your chief guest she's is trying to find Greece. the masala i'm yeah. going to try and find the discord right look discord nahi hai we are celebrating the fact that there are differences hmm. because uh, or rather we are an arena that is disagreement central not because we want the world to remain in that state but we want to get past them hmm. and unless you voice them how will you get over them so right. the idea here is to let's let's create an arena where uh, people who you disagree with can be a part of it as well why greece i think greece is a crucial element in our very important strategic project of linking up the indo pacific to the med atlantic in fact i think these are the four water bodies that need to be thought of in a in a framework for the future mm. the indo pacific which we already are quite mm. aware of but you mm. also have to remember there is a mediterranean atlantic dynamic of course a- and these two when linked up create uh, uh, the plural mm. liberal new architecture in antiquity uh, greece and india had correct. amazing linkages yeah. right. seleucus so so Alexander, there is no there is yeah. no linkage of uh, the west and the east without mm. the mediterranean and the arabian sea yes uh, the bosphorus yeah uh, uh, you know right so it has to be in some sense so uh, greece is a crucial element uh, like italy was right so greece italy france uh, since since time immemorial yeah, these have been the uh, these these have been the the links that laid uh, the foundations for the globalization that we experience today so globalization has its genesis in these links hmm. and it's uh, sad sometimes that we have moved away as we've uh, hmm. progressed yeah. In time. many of your conversations you talk about uh, multilateralism uh, the challenges towards it and how the uh, how it's changing morphing into different uh, uh, beings now like Correct uh, yeah. and I call this uh, uh, plurilateralism right mm. so I think we will ha- and and by the way IMEC which was announced on the sidelines of the G20 the India Middle mm-hmm. East Europe corridor with the Americans Uh, as a core partner mm. in this and that's why i bring the atlantic into and it and the mbs and biden handshake and the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. india got it done yeah again you saw that right yes. yeah. so 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 uh, there a lot of photo ops in that, in uh, that g20, g20 right yeah and fantastic again very a, a very uh, so i think raisina is one of those spaces where india makes these kind of magics happen mm. this is magic it is yeah. you know in, in, is. in geopolitical uh, imagery this yeah. is magic that in the in that uh, prime minister modi standing there president biden uh, mbs yeah. uh, and you know you you have uh, uh, the, you have created a bilateral moment uh, as a third party and i think uh, uh, responsible large nations are likely to create such moments for others and i think raisina is that one of the global public offerings from india that you can come and you create your moments on a indian pin code mm-hmm. so uh, i call it the india's global public square or india's uh, global public square with a delhi zip code right so mm-hmm. that is rising that this is a place where magic can happen where moments are made um, between parties completely unrelated to the host country and i think that is also rising that is also one of our jobs as a as a provider of opportunities you have israelis you have iranians you have your folks who will normally not meet mm-hmm. and you have uh, 
a Raisina Young Fellows program, which is going to have 56 young fellows from 34 countries, which will have, uh, which has, which is the quad edition. So we are focusing on quad countries this time because India is the lead of uh, uh, the quad this year. So we have 20 young fellows from quad countries participating, but we also have an Iranian in the quad edition mm -hmm. Raisina Young Fellows program. So where else in the world will you have a quad edition Young Fellows program, which has a young Armenian, a young Iranian, Iranian. diplomat uh, participating in it, right? Yeah. So, so this only happens in India. Yeah. And this is uh, the magic of this country, right? And why should we ever give that away or lose it? Hmm. We should be able to bring people together. That is our single biggest um, attribute that the world needs. On that note, thank you so much, uh, Samir, and all the best for uh, Raisina 2024. We look forward to partnering with you uh, at this uh, not yeah, yeah, talk shop. Thank you. Thank ANI for the partnership. I think we did well last year. We are going to do better this year. So I we always look forward to uh, your support. And um, I think uh, any Indian story that is uh, heard in different parts of the world may have its origins in the work that you do. So I think ANI is doing a stellar job in taking India to the world and bringing the world to India. So thank you for the work you do. Thank, thank you. you so much. And we are not a talk shop. <laughs> and uh, for viewers and listeners, those who want to uh, watch or listen in uh, to these conversations, log on to the ORF website where the videos will be up or to the ANI site where we will put up the conversations uh, on the sidelines of the Raisina Dialogue. Thank you, Samir, once again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for watching or listening in to this episode of the ANI podcast with Smita Prakash. Do like or subscribe on whichever channel you have seen this or heard this. Namaste. Jai Hind. Click here to watch the previous episodes.